Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Uh, yo, 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 how is it? And this is Matt. <laughs> this is Rachel. And we are about to show you some of the coolest stuff on the planet. That's right. I'm getting excited here, Rachel. Me too, me because too. Because I like things with ancient history, and this is one of them. And this site is particularly cool. Okay, I'm going to try and contain my happiness. Here we go. <clears throat> Today's travels take us back to Egypt, to a little place called the Karnak Temple Complex, or more commonly, just Karnak. That's K-A-R-N-A-K, -A -A if you didn't read it on your iTunes readout slash whatever else you're using to get this. Uh, it's located on the east bank of the Nile River near the modern-day city of Luxor. Karnak is this massive temple complex uh, that was built and rebuilt over centuries. Mm -hmm. It all started with Pharaoh Senusret I in the Middle Kingdom period of Egyptian history in about 1971 BCE. He built a small temple dedicated to Amun-Ra, so that was the start of a centuries-long period of construction, which took place from the, from the Middle Kingdom period in Egyptian history all the way to the Greco-Roman era. Mm -hmm. Basically, this construction of this massive complex took place over more than 1,500 years. Mm -hmm. Over this time period, uh, more than 30 pharaohs and rulers built temples, uh, chapels, shrines, uh, massive columned halls, obelisks and statues, you name it, um, over these centuries. And uh, they effectively turned Karnak into one of the largest religious complexes in the world. It's pretty cool. A lot of rulers had their hands in creating this place. So Karnak is divided into four areas, or they call them precincts. But the largest and most famous, and the one that's accessible to the public, is the precinct of Amun-Ra. Now, this is the one that houses the main temple at the center, the Temple of Amun-Ra, and also the Stargate. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, oh, that was... Really? No, no, there's no Stargate. Uh, they haven't, they yes, haven't found it is. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, a cool part of this main complex is the Great Hippostyle Hall. It's often described as a, kind of a forest of stone, which I like. That's a nice image because it has 134 gigantic pillars that once supported the roof. And that's actually what hippostyle means. Okay. It's, it's, it's a style where the columns support the roof. So, so the tallest of these, um, there are some shorter ones, but the really tall ones are 69 feet tall. Uh, the smallest ones are about 49 feet tall. And I think they're somewhere around maybe 33 feet around. They're very large. Wow. And um, you'll notice lots of hieroglyphics and inscriptions all over both the inside and the outside of this hall. Mm -hmm. Another cool feature about Karnak are these obelisks right here. These granite monoliths were quarried in one giant piece. So they're cut out in, in this size, this huge size. And you're, you can't even see the entire thing because a lot of it's in the ground. What's really fascinating about obelisks is that they don't really know how they got these to stand up. But also, they stand on their own weight. Yes. There's nothing keeping them on that the surface that they're standing on. There's so, no cement pillars or anything like that. There's nothing that's Which might explain why some have fallen over through, <laughs> over time. But still, that's impressive. Ah, ancient aliens, Rachel. That's <laughs> the answer. In fact, some of the... Um, some of the largest obelisks at Karnak were built by Hatshepsut, who was the only female pharaoh in Egyptian history. The king herself, oh yeah, as she is often referred to. It's pretty awesome. She built four massive uh, granite obelisks at Karnak, um, and today only one is standing. Um, and then the there's another one that's that's sort of displayed on its side because mm -hmm. it fell over. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a taste of Karnak. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're hooked on Egyptian history and architecture, just like we are. Totally. And other ancient civilizations. So, anyway, if you, if you want to find out more about any of these, head to our website and get lost in the mystery of Egypt. Also, one other cool thing um, I wanted to plug. UCLA has this really neat uh, digital project around um, Karnak. Yes, you show me this. And they have um, these amazing animations of how the site was constructed, its development, how it would have looked, or how it looked at the time before it was ruined. And um, you can also you can get a plug-in from them on Google Earth as well as Google Maps that'll show you the 3D version of what it looked like. And all right, that's it, everybody. If you want to send us any information, if you want to tell us that we should stop tar talking about Stargates, uh, or if you want to just say, hey, man, you guys are awesome, dude. 
just send a little message over to travelpodcast at howstuffworks.com. And uh, I think that's it, Rach. Yep. We'll see you next time. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit howstuffworks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at howstuffworks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.